What is up guys, as usual it's Jay, and in this video I'll be showing you how to fully upgrade the Wolven School Witcher gear, as usual, all the way to Grandmaster. In previous videos I also covered all the other Witcher sets, so if the Wolven style doesn't suit your playstyle, make sure to check those out. If that sounds good to you, then make sure to smack that thumbs up real good. Check out this chart, as you can see there's a total of 6 optional maps called Notes, which you can purchase from various traders revealing the locations of all the Wolven School diagrams, from Basic to Enhanced, Superior, then Master Crafted. To upgrade to the top tier Grand Master level, you first need to upgrade the Witcher gear to the Master Crafted level, then complete a level 40 quest in the Blood and Wine expansion to gain access to the only Grandmaster Crafter in the entire game. This is all explained in detail later in the video. For now, we'll focus on attaining all diagrams up to and including Master Crafted quality, which is all achieved in the base game. When you purchase any of the notes, make sure to locate them in your inventory under quest items to open and read them. This will update the related Scavenger Hunt quest under the Treasure Hunt section with new relevant information. As you'll learn, all Witcher gear quests are always named Scavenger Hunts for easy identification. Reading any one of the six map notes in this guide will always start a new base quest called Scavenger Hunt Wolf School Gear, which reveals the location of all basic level diagrams for the Wolf School Witcher set. This basic set of equipment is required before any quality upgrades can take place. Reading the first and second notes reveals the locations for all the enhanced level Wolf School diagrams. Note 1 can be purchased from Hattori, the master blacksmith in Novigrad City, as shown here. Note 2 can be purchased from the blacksmith from Lindendale Village in Velen, as shown here. These notes will unlock upgrade diagrams parts 1 and 2 respectively in the quest menu. Reading the third and fourth notes reveals the locations for all the superior level Wolf School diagrams. Note 3 can be purchased from the Armourer at the Care Trolled Citadel in Skellige, as shown here. Note 4 can be purchased from the Armourer of Hierarch Square in Velen, as shown here. These notes will unlock upgrade diagrams parts 3 and 4 respectively in the quest menu. Reading the 5th and 6th notes reveals the locations for all the Master Crafted level Wolf School diagrams. Note 5, just like Note 1, can be purchased from Hattori, the Master Blacksmith in Novigrad City. And Note 6, just like Note 3, can be purchased from the Armourer at the Care Trolled Citadel in Skellige. These notes will unlock upgrade diagrams parts 5 and 6 respectively in the quest menu. Lower qualities of the Wolf School Witcher gear are prerequisite to the next. This means to be able to craft the top tier Grandmaster quality, you first need to craft every quality level from basic to master crafted. Only then will the Grandmaster option be accessible for crafting. Remember, amateur level craftsmen cannot craft any Witcher School gear even at their most basic level. You need to visit journeyman skilled crafters who have the ability to piece together Basic, Enhanced and Superior Witcher gear, while Master Crafted and Grand Master equipment can only be crafted by Master and Grand Master level crafters respectively. This means we first need to find all basic level diagrams before any of these upgrades can take place. Go ahead and highlight the base quest simply named Scavenger Hunt Wolf School gear to make it your next quest objective. All seven basic diagrams are located in Care Moorhen so make sure you've progressed far enough into the story to unlock access to this area, which is approximately mid to late game. From the Care Morhen signpost located just outside the Witcher Fortress, drop down off the rocky verge to the left of the damaged wooden bridge. Continue down the pile of fallen stone and round to the left to follow the dirt path heading in a northwesterly direction. Your destination is an unmarked signal tower atop a treacherous cliff pathway patrolled by harpies. When you reach the stone marker holding a torch on the path, 
Head west up across the grassy forest where you'll be met by a pack of wild wolves. Sprint past or take them down, then continue up the incline and follow the dirt track at the top which winds round to the southeast. Continue along the cliff path and you'll notice some stone steps leading up to the tumble down tower to the east. At the top of the steps pass through a stone archway with its wooden door smashed down in the next area. Here you'll notice a broken wall on the left. Head through this collapsed section of wall and on the other side notice a steep drop and the Caer Morhen fortress to your left. Climb up the wooden scaffolding along the cliff's edge and just to the right in an alcove on the tower's stone wall you'll notice a polished crystal. Take this crystal then head back through the broken wall near the archway entrance. Climb up the fallen wall to the left to access the main area of the tower where you'll notice more scaffolding platforms. To the left you'll notice a wooden ladder. Climb this ladder and at the top loot the ornate chest and read the notes within to reveal additional quest objectives on your map. Now drop back down to the lower level and using your Witcher sensors, investigate a portal generator to the left, evidently missing its power cell. Interact with the curved contraption and mount the polished crystal you acquired from the outer wall. Once inserted, activate the portal generator using a blast of Ard. As you'll witness, this creates an unstable green maelstrom just beyond the tower's walls. Using your Witcher sensors, investigate a second portal generator just to the right. You'll notice this one has its power crystal already installed. So go ahead and power it up with another Blast of Ard to fully stabilize the portal. Now sprint off the edge of the wooden platform to drop down onto the green portal, passing through to the other side. You appear inside a small cave occupied by a wraith. After feeding it some silver, examine the skeletal remains the wraith was associated with, which turns out to be Hieronymus himself. Looting the body rewards you with the basic diagrams for all four wearable pieces, the armour, boots, gauntlets and trousers, as well as an optional note revealing Hieronymus's last words. Now journey to the Bastion Ruins located directly to the west of the Witcher Fortress, as shown here on the map. As Geralt remembers out loud, this is where he used to train as a boy and the place is now haunted. After dealing with the angry wraiths, using your Witcher sensors, examine the burned out structure close to the perimeter stone steps. Inspect the half buried skeletal remains of the Witcher Varin, who carries the basic steel sword diagram as well as a journal to optionally read at your leisure. Now head to the ruined Watchtower signpost located to the northwest of the expansive lake. You can get there by boat or foot, whichever takes your fancy. Upon arrival, take down any hostiles, then using your Witcher sensors, examine the skeletal remains slumped up against the wall by the stone steps of the secondary tower. Loot the corpse for an optional journal kept by Hieronymus's assistant, as well as the basic silver sword diagram. This now concludes the initial base quest scavenger hunt wolf school gear, allowing you to craft a full set of basic quality wolven school witcher gear at any journeyman or higher skilled craftsman. Moving on, we'll locate all the enhanced diagrams for the wolven school set. Marked as parts 1 and 2 in the quest entry, each part reveals the locations of 3 enhanced diagrams, 6 in total allowing you to upgrade all the gear to the next level of quality. Make sure to go ahead and select part 1 as your next quest objective. The first three enhanced diagrams found in part 1 of the quest are all found in Velen. Head on over to Crow's Perch and proceed over the bridge and through the main gates to enter the courtyard of the Bloody Baron's estate. Locate the garden to the northwest, just to the left of the Baron's manor then climb down into the large well using the wooden ladder. At the bottom, head down the cave pathway and continue following it round to the southwest, dropping down a couple of earthy ledges. Just to the right of the pool of water, resting up against the far northern wall, is a chest containing the enhanced silver sword diagram. Now head to the abandoned village of Frischlow to the very south of Velen, as shown here on the map. When you arrive, take the path heading north leading you out of the settlement. Proceed across the marshlands and jump into the waters of Lake Windermere, swimming in a northwesterly direction. Just ahead, you'll notice a small island with the remains of a brick folly. 
slowly sinking into the water. When approaching, have your crossbow handy as many drowners will be lurking beneath the waves. Just off the eastern tip of the island, where the brick remains are still visible, dive underwater and use your Witcher sensors to detect a number of chests deep below the surface. The ornate one shown here houses the enhanced armour diagram. Next up, fast travel to the Grotto signpost located in the northeastern corner of Crookback Bog. The grotto's entrance faces the Pontar River, which is usually guarded by several drowners. After dealing with them, enter the cave and take the path leading right when the tunnel splits. Proceed through the tunnels and take the left path when the tunnel splits again. When the passage widens out into a room, you'll notice a chest to the left among some stalagmites, which houses the Enhanced Boots Diagram. Now you've acquired the Enhanced Silver Sword, Boots and Armor Diagrams, this concludes Part 1 of the quest. So go ahead and activate Part 2 as your next quest objective, revealing the locations of the remaining three Enhanced Diagrams, which are all found in Kaer Morhen. From the Iron Mine signpost to the south of the area, head downstream and follow the dirt path heading in a southeastern direction. Cross the stream when you reach the waterfall and continue up the steep pathway heading uphill on the other side. At the top, you'll notice the path curves round to the left, leading into a rocky canyon. Instead of entering the canyon, head left and down onto a verge of grass where you'll notice a cave opening to your right, leading deep into the rocky cliff. Once inside, continue along the tunnel corridor and after a short distance, drop down the rocky ledge to your right. Continue round to your left, but this time climb up onto another rocky ledge leading into a Forktail's lair. Just to your left amongst the bracken and foliage sits a wooden chest, containing the enhanced gauntlets diagram. Next up, head over to the Lakeside Hut Fast Travel Signpost, located at the most southern point of the expansive lake. Upon arrival, head northeast along the water's edge, until you reach a small island just off the shoreline. Dive into the water using your Witcher sensors to identify a chest just below the water's surface on the southern bank of the small island. Once looted, you'll be rewarded with the Enhanced Trousers Diagram. Once again, head on over to the ruined Watchtower at the northwestern end of the expansive lake. Upon arrival, head up the grassy slope to the left of the main entrance. Above the archway, sitting on a wooden platform, is an ornate chest, which upon looting, rewards you with the Enhanced Steel Sword Diagram. This now concludes parts 1 and 2 of the quest allowing you to craft a full set of enhanced quality Wolven School Witcher gear at any journeyman or higher skilled craftsman. Moving on, we'll locate all the superior diagrams for the Wolven School set. Marked as parts 3 and 4 in the quest entry, each part reveals the locations of three superior diagrams, six in total, allowing you to upgrade all the gear to the next level of quality. Make sure to go ahead and select part 3 as your next quest objective. The first three superior diagrams found in part 3 of the quest are all found in Skelliger Isles. First up, head on over to the settlement of Firesdal on the southern coastline of Ard Skellig. Upon arrival, head southwest out of the village and continue along the dirt path up some increasingly steep terrain until you reach the remains of Fort Grimyar. Jump up onto the wooden wall to the northern perimeter battlements, then head south along the walkway to the foot of the southern tower. Here, you'll find an ornate chest containing the superior armor diagram. Next up, head on over to the eastern island of Hindersfjall, where you'll find a fast travel signpost taking you into the crumbling village of Lofoten. Head out of the settlement and take the main dirt road heading southwest. Continue along the track which takes you up and across a wooden bridge. Just past this point, as the path slowly winds round to the north, you'll notice, sitting on top of a rocky cliff to your right, an old set of stone ruins to investigate. Climbing up a couple of rocky verges on the west side of the ruins reveals a set of stone steps leading down into the ruins below. Beware of an ice troll who patrols the upper area. Drop down into the hole to enter the ruins. Then head through the opening to the northeast and drop down to proceed into a chamber, where toxic fumes make traversing the room tricky. 
Quen can be handy here, as well as Igni to temporarily disperse the escaping gas, and create a path to allow safe passage to the northern end of the room, where you'll find a reinforced chest containing the superior steel sword diagram. Next up, head on over to the peaceful village of Arinbjorn, to the very west of Ard Skellig, as shown here on the map. Upon arrival, take the path heading southeast out of the settlement. After a short distance, proceed up some winding stone steps, leading to an ancient burial ground at the top called the Barrow. At the top of the steps, enter the vine-covered doorway directly ahead, and descend down into a campsite with a blood-drenched mattress. In the alcove, just to the left of the wooden washing basin, half sunken in a pile of dirt, is a small metal storage box containing the superior silver sword diagram. Now you've acquired the superior armor, steel sword and silver sword diagrams, this concludes part 3 of the quest, so go ahead and activate part 4 as your next quest objective, revealing the locations of the remaining 3 superior diagrams, which are all found in Kaer Morhen. Fast travel to the Iron Mine signpost, located a short distance south of the Kaer Morhen fortress. From the signpost, follow the path heading south, which quickly winds round to the west, leading you into the old workings of the Iron Mine itself. Follow the tunnels round, which lead into an opening, where you'll encounter a level 30 Earth Elemental, summoned by a mage to guard the area. After taking it down, look for a stone altar along the northern edge of the chamber. Here, you'll find a small metal box, which upon looting, rewards you with the superior gauntlets diagram. Now head back to the Iron Mine signpost, but this time, cross the river and follow the riverbank heading east, all the way round as it bends to the north. As you draw nearer the quest marker, you'll have to swim a short distance up the river, and into the large south-facing entrance of Berengar's cave, which you'll notice upon arrival is lightly flooded. After entering the cave, take an immediate right up the worn steps, and continue along the thin passage until you drop down a rocky verge at the end, leading into a large interior cavern. Sticking close to the right wall, continue forward and you'll notice some stalagmites and tree vines hiding a wooden chest among the bracken. Looting this chest rewards you with a superior boots diagram. The final superior diagram is located in the Cave of the Trials of the Grasses. From the Kaer Morhen signpost, drop down off the verge to the left of the fortress bridge, then follow the mountainous dirt trail leading all the way up to the northwest. Stick to the path for the entire journey, and after a long, arduous climb, you'll spot a small cave entrance to the west, where Geralt used to train as a boy. Draw your silver sword and apply some oil, then head inside and take down the various necrophages occupying the winding tunnels. Once all their limbs have been sliced and diced, proceed further into the tunnels, and along the southern edge you'll notice a low stone wall with stalagmites on top. Destroying these stalagmites with Ard will give you access to a hidden chest behind, which when looted, rewards you with the superior trousers diagram. This now concludes parts 3 and 4 of the quest, allowing you to craft a full set of superior quality Wolven School Witcher gear at any journeyman or higher skilled craftsman. Moving on, we'll locate all the master crafted diagrams for the Wolven School set, marked as parts 5 and 6 in the quest entry, each part reveals the locations of three master crafted diagrams, six in total, allowing you to upgrade all the gear to the next level of quality. Make sure to go ahead and select part five as your next quest objective. The first three master crafted diagrams found in part five of the quest are all found in Velen. Journey to the western side of the Maya territory in southwest Velen. You're headed due south of the destroyed village of Kondaya. When you reach the lakeside hut with a jetty and boat, dive straight into the water and swim directly to the sunken ship to the southwest, with its mast still visible above the water's surface. When you eventually reach the wreckage, swim directly down to the stairs leading into the ship's hold. Use your Witcher sensors to highlight the chest that's located directly beneath the hold stairs, which upon looting, rewards you with the master crafted steel sword diagram. Next up, travel to the deserted settlement of Byways, which is located on the landmass just southwest of Fike Isle, as shown here. 
From the signpost, follow the dirt's path heading east, and take a trip through the long grass and conifers, toward an ancient, crumbling elven ruin. Wraiths roam this sorrowful place when you first visit, so make sure to have your yard and sign equipped and ready for deployment. Inside the circular stone offering point located to the left of the ruined stairs, you'll notice a small metal box, which upon looting, rewards you with the Master Crafted Armour Diagram. The final Master Crafted Diagram found in Velen is near the road signposted as Kimbolt Way, as shown here. A journey down to the southeastern part of Velen, deep within the marshes of Crookback Bog territory, is required. From the signpost, head south, down into and through the hamlet, which has now been overrun by bandits, then continue into the marshlands directly ahead. Look for the large oak tree where someone has built a rickety den made from planks of wood and tree branches. Stay alert as this place is normally guarded by a ferocious fiend. Just out the front of the locked wooden doors, you'll notice two unlucky victims who made the mistake of disturbing the fiend. Loot the corpses for a key, granting access to the den, which hides an ornate chest within. Looting this chest rewards you with the Master Crafted Silver Sword Diagram. Now you have acquired the Master Crafted Armour, Steel Sword and Silver Sword Diagrams, this concludes Part 5 of the quest, so go ahead and activate Part 6 as your next quest objective, revealing the locations of the remaining three Master Crafted Diagrams, which are all found in Skelliger Isles. In the middle of the main island of Ard Skellig locates the settlement of Boxhole, which has been recently devastated by Morvad, a powerful fiend relating to contract Missing Sun. From the signpost, follow the path north, which leads all the way up and round to the crumbling derelict castle. Avoid entering the grounds at the large broken section of wall to the left, which Morvad occupies. Instead, continue round the perimeter to the southern side of the tower and hop onto the broken wall connecting to the tallest piece of the ruin. Nestled on top of this wall is a wooden chest containing the master crafted Gauntlet's diagram. Set sail for the ghost village of Dorv Ruins, located to the southwest of Skelliger on a ravaged isle named Undvik. Upon arrival, head into the settlement and follow the path southeast through the deserted village. Head to the top of the path on the highest ground at the southeastern point of the ruins, where you'll find a crumbling watchtower, which like the rest of the village, was completely destroyed by the ice giant. Maneuver round the base of the structure and you'll spot an ornate chest hidden behind a bush propped up in the corner of the stone wall. Looting this chest rewards you with the Master Crafted Boots Diagram. The final sixth Master Crafted Diagram is found off the northwestern coast of Ard Skellig, on the small isle of Spikaroog. Here, you'll find a fast travel point for the old watchtower. Travel there now, and upon arrival, you'll notice the white stone wall of the tower with an archway entrance. Head past the stone signpost to your left, then climb up onto the wall from its lowest point. Carefully navigate across the top of the wall over the archway, and look for an ornate chest cunningly placed on the other side by the vertical wooden support beam. The Master Crafted Trousers Diagram is your prize. This now concludes part 6 of the quest, allowing you to craft a full set of Master Crafted Wolven School Witcher gear at any Master or Grand Master skilled craftsman. Note, only craftsmen ranked at master level will be able to produce master crafted quality equipment. Hattori, who's situated just outside the market square in Novigrad City, is the only master blacksmith available in the base game, while the only master armourer in the base game is Joanna, who works with the dwarf Fergus at Crow's Perch within the grounds of the Bloody Baron. To unlock the services of these two master craftsmen, lengthy side quests will first need to be completed by speaking with them in person. Finally, we need to locate all six Grand Master Diagrams, allowing you to create the ultimate version of the Wolven School Witcher gear. This final scavenger hunt quest has a recommended level of 40, and is only available in the Blood and Wine expansion. As previously mentioned, Master Crafted Equipment is a prerequisite before Grand Master Crafting options become available. When you reach the country of Toussaint, head to the Grand Place signpost in the capital city as shown here. 
Just to the south of this point is a workshop owned by a master craftsman named Lazar Lafargue who can produce both weapons and armour at master crafted quality from the moment you set foot inside his shop. Speak to Lafargue to unlock the scavenger hunt related to the Grand Master diagrams you wish to obtain. In this case, the wolf. Now go ahead and activate the new scavenger hunt Grand Master Wolven Gear quest to make it your next quest objective. All six Grand Master diagrams are found in the far eastern side of Toussaint deep within the Elven Palace ruins at Termes, which is the last known location of the Witcher Aedon. Travel to the expedition site now, located in northeast Caraberta Woods territory. As you arrive, the camp is a short distance east of the signpost, where rotting tents are still visible, just south of the Elven ruins. After dealing with the hostile plant life, conduct a search of the camp using your Witcher sensors. Loot the small box located under the makeshift bench, where you'll find Isabel's journal, detailing an expedition to study the Elven Palace ruins. It seems entering the ruins is necessary to continue the investigation. Leave the camp and head across the top of the crumbling palace to reach the northern end of the ruins. Head down and round the broken steps to the left and continue down to where you'll find a courtyard with a large oak tree and stone statues. Drop down off the broken ledge just ahead and inspect the archway down to the right with its wooden door smashed down. A purple magical barrier prevents you from proceeding deeper into the ruins. To the right on the wall you'll notice a mechanism to insert some form of key. Retrace your steps back outside where you'll notice some skeletal remains slumped up against the fallen masonry steps you just came from. Loot the purple ruby sitting on the floor just in front of the corpse, then insert it into the purple barrier's mechanism to disable it, allowing you to enter and explore the internal palace chambers. You'll encounter numerous restless spirits within the palace hallways, so if you happen to know the formula for spectre oil, coat your blade before entering and make slow and steady progress to avoid becoming overwhelmed. After dealing with the Astral Hounds, head left down the East Corridor and use a Blast of Ard to smash through the cracked wall at the end. This leads you into a rocky tunnel which takes you into the lair of a giant centipede which needs to be slain. Once it's down, climb up the rocky ledge to the northwest of the room and blast through another cracked wall which leads you into the second part of the underground ruins. You'll be immediately rushed by several spectral entities, so it's imperative to prepare for a tough fight. Once you gain control of the situation, head east through the archway and into a room with a dead end. Under the massive rock boulder in the southeastern corner, you'll find the skeletal remains of the Witcher Aedon, and upon looting his corpse, you'll be rewarded with the Grand Master diagrams for the Steel Sword, Silver Sword and Gauntlets. Now leave the room and head west into a tomb on the other side, where you make a spectacular discovery. Not just any tomb, but the tomb of the king himself. Strewn on the tiled floor of this chamber lies the witcher's satchel, just in front of where the king lies. Within, you'll find the remaining three Grand Master diagrams for the armour, trousers and boots. This now concludes the Grand Master Wolvine Gear quest allowing you to craft a full set of Grand Master quality Wolven Skull Witcher gear at Lazar Lafargue's specialised workshop. Now head back to Lafargue in Toussaint so you can make copies of the plans and become the only Grand Master crafter in the game. He'll then be able to craft you the best possible Wolven armour known to man, elf or dwarf, as well as any other Grand Master Witcher gear for which you have the diagrams. As you can see on this chart, when it comes to Witcher gear, two unique perk bonuses are activated when you upgrade a full Witcher set to Grandmaster quality. One perk is awarded when you equip three Grandmaster pieces, and a second when you equip all six. These bonuses can dramatically bolster your playstyle, and their specialised effects are unique to each school. To unlock both perks for each set will take a significant amount of grinding, resources and coin. So make sure to research each school carefully before making any final decisions on which sets you want to max out. If you learned a thing or two from this video, please punch that thumbs up, 
and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more quality content from Game of Grey. Every like and sub helps me tremendously and will allow me to make more kick-ass videos in future. I'm Jay, peace out and I'll see you in the next one.